Hey there, this is Eric with Black Swan Odysseys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a product review on this jacket. This is the Climb Induction Pro. Stick around, it's going to be a good one. So let's talk about Fitbit first of all. To give you uh, kind of a size comparison, I'm five foot eleven, weigh about 220 pounds, and I just stalled my bike. Uh, I wear a large. This jacket is a large, and it fits me very well. Uh, it allows me a little extra room where I can throw a sweatshirt underneath it. This jacket breathes super well. And therefore, if I didn't have an undergarment on, I'd be freezing my ass off. And that extra room, that's kind of a, a, a topic. Obviously, safety gear, you want it tight to your body, so it, so your armor stays put where it wants. Because obviously, if you uh, touch down on the pavement, the last thing you want is your shoulders or your elbow pads to roll out of the area of protection. But with that, there's always a trade-off. If I have skin-tight clothing, A, it's not gonna be very comfortable, and B, it's not very versatile. I can't put anything underneath it. And that's one thing about this Klein jacket we'll talk about more, but the fact that it's very breathable and in cooler uh, temperatures, it's nice to be able to have that extra room where I can throw a, a sweatshirt underneath. This is a one season jacket, one season only. You could wear anything anywhere, but obviously for comfort, <laughs> you know, uh, this jacket is made to breathe well in summer heat. And it does an amazing job at that. Uh, the, I've had other meth jackets before from different companies. Uh, Klein has seemed to figure it out. And the mesh system that they use on this just provides a lot of airflow through the jacket to keep you cool. But that's a trade off. Right now it's uh, 60 degrees out, and that's right at the edge of comfort level with this jacket. I've got a sweatshirt on underneath. This, in a summertime heat, I've ridden this thing up to 117 degrees, and moving along as you have airflow through the jacket, no problem at all. The other advantage of that, that uh, extra room in the jacket is you can put a cool vest underneath this uh, quite readily. Klein's jacket has the back armor, D3O, as well as the shoulders and elbows, also D3O. So that's kind of a nice feature. You're not having to buy any extra armor. It comes with, with good stuff already. Continuing on into the construction, you'll see it's all double stitched. See, looking down the shoulder, the elbow pads where the leather's stitched on has a double stitching all the way through. Nice. Uh, their mesh that they use is supposed to be proprietary. It's a little stretchy, not much. And then and the uh, shoulder panels, the shoulder blade panels, have a stretchy material. So let's talk about zippers. So there's, uh, they're all YKK zippers, so good quality. The, the main zipper, the, the jacket zipper, is large. Some of these, uh, you know, large teeth. And that was one thing on my last jacket, the zipper on it was uh, pretty skimpy. As a matter of fact, it blew out a couple times because it was just too small of a zipper for the jacket. Um, all the pockets obviously have smaller teeth zippers. But like I said, YKK, and so you have pockets, your your uh, waist pockets for your hand, hand pockets. You've got an exterior uh, breast pocket, and you have um, an interior on the opposite side uh, breast pocket. 
and then lastly you have your emergency uh, pocket for your emergency information on your left sleeve and it's marked there with the international uh, medical symbol and a very bright green zipper so it's easy to spot pocket depths I can comfortably put in my breast pocket my iPhone uh, 12 Pro so it'll hold a full-size iPhone uh, the hand pockets the waist pockets uh, your hands can go in them quite readily one of the negative things about it is the is the zipper pocket is uh, kind of way to the to the side of your your um, torso which means that when you go to put your hand in the pocket it the zipper presses into the top of your your wrist uncomfortably it's not tearing it up but it's you're not going to walk around with your hands in your pockets very long so as you can see uh, i'm riding in the snow line and i've got my uh, hoodie underneath my jacket and it's chilly but it's doable i wouldn't be able to ride all day like this but uh, having the ability to put something an undergarment underneath this jacket makes it makes a nice little selling feature in its size wise So, and that kind of brings up another point right now. This is truly a one season jacket. It's really just a summertime jacket. If you're riding anything below 60 degrees Fahrenheit, this jacket is not gonna be comfortable. Uh, right now it's uh, 50, ooh, 51 degrees. I'm up a little colder and uh, it, it's chilly <laughs> I'll that right now. And that's with a sweatshirt on underneath. This, they did a good job with this mesh. There's gusset straps on your forearms, right? It just below the elbows. You can cinch up your your arms. Uh, that's kind of like helping a little bit more to keep your uh, elbow pads in, in the correct place. They're easy to loosen. They kind of have to fiddle around with it a little to tighten them up. They're not super easy. Uh, I like the cinch versus some of the other jackets will have a series of snaps. Uh, with this, you can really uh, pull them down to the tightness you want. Moving on down the arm, so at the wrist you have the Velcro uh, cuff straps, and here I think I would prefer to have snaps versus Velcro. Uh, I just don't, I don't like Velcro because they tend to like curl up at the end, and then eventually you're knocking them against something and, and knocking them loose. Where versus a snapped uh, wrist strap, they seem to hold a lot better. But eh, it's not that big of a deal either way. I don't know if. Uh, if they did that purposely on design or for our cost of having to uh, put a snap there. It's hard to say. Both jackets have that same Velcro strapping on the wrist. And I believe both jackets also have that emergency card pocket too, the exact same way. And they both also have the gusset straps on the, on the forearms. This jacket is $4.99 at Cycle Gear right now, and the induction is uh, $3.99. And there's a burned out car. I say that's a stolen car, what do you think? No plates, windows all bashed up. They probably took off what they wanted. Cost-wise, it's a little on the expensive side, but I think when you factor in that it comes with full armor, both back, shoulder, and elbows, all D3O, I think you can add that. That kind of tempers the price of being on the high side for a summer jacket. Climb's known for their quality, uh, you know, your garments, you know, products that they make are all top-notch. You pay a little extra money for it. I mean, you're, you're paying for what you get. You're not paying for a name. And that's, that's nice. Decided so lastly, let's go over the differences between the Induction Standard Jacket and the Induction Pro, which is the jacket I have here. There's not a whole lot different, uh, but they are pretty substantial. Starting with the armor and the shoulders, back, and elbows. It's D3O armor in both jackets. However, the Induction Pro has a level two protection versus uh, the Induction regular jacket only has a level one. You can tell the difference in the armor by looking at them. Level one armor is yellow 
and it's a lot more pliable. Level 2 Pro Armor is orange and it's a lot stiffer. The difference between those is the impact rating. You just have a higher impact rating uh, with level 2 versus level 1. Uh, some people say that there's a comfort level difference because of this because the armor doesn't give as much. I didn't notice that. I like the added uh, protection. The induction pro jacket also has leather on the elbows, perforated leather. I think that's a nice feature for sliding. If that's where I'm going to impact first, it's nice to have leather to slide on the pavement. Cordura. So both jackets have Cordura on the sleeves, shoulders, and so forth. Uh, the uh, Induction Pro has 750D versus the Induction Regular, which is 500D Cordura. And then the last thing is exterior breast pocket. They, in recent years, have removed the outer breast pocket from the Induction and only have it in the Induction Pro. I really like the exterior uh, breast pocket. My phone lives there. Obviously, $100 price increase for a breast pocket wouldn't be it, but the other features, I think, makes it, in my mind, worth it to pay that extra money for the Induction Pro. But I'm not discounting the induction. I think that's a very good jacket too. All my product reviews are from items that I purchase and use on my own. None of these are sponsored from uh, various vendors or companies. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you have a climb jacket, I'd like to hear your opinion on the jacket and what you think of the good features of it. And hit that subscribe bu button. I try to get videos out at least once a month. So have a great day and we'll see you on the next ride.